You would have seen Bowel Babe, Dame Deborah James, the late Dame Deborah James, who, of course, really did increase people's awareness of bowel cancer uh, through her podcast, through her being a columnist in the Sun newspaper, which, of course, is based in this building. So many more people are talking about bowel cancer. Well, it seems that there is now a clever new device that could change bowel cancer pathways in the UK forever, which will enhance early detection of the disease, therefore actually not only saving money, but ultimately, hopefully, saving lives. Well, to tell us a little more about this, James Kinross is a consultant surgeon at the colorectal surgery at Imperial College London and joins us now. Uh, afternoon to you, James. Good afternoon. So, um, uh, pathways and and early detections, you know, uh, break this down for someone <laughs> okay. who will understand this. What has been discovered and how is it going to make it easier to detect bowel cancer? Sure. So, look, bowel cancer is probably the third or fourth commonest cancer. Well, it's the fourth commonest cancer in the UK, the third globally, and the second commonest cause of cancer death. It's a big problem. We have a national screening program for it, and we need to do a better job at detecting it early, because if you detect it early, it is curable. You can cure it. So the NHS, as you I'm sure have heard a lot about on this program, is struggling at the moment. We have big waiting lists, big backlogs. We struggle to get through the diagnostic burden of trying to detect this disease. And what we're trying to do with this device is to make that easier and to try and take that diagnostic burden out of hospitals into the primary care into the gp clinic so that people can have tests faster uh, and they can get a diagnosis faster and, and do you think that that's a part of i mean there are many aspects of this but do you think that's a part of what it is that because people are a bit funny about talking about bowel cancer because yeah. you know it is about what comes out your bowel poo yeah ultimately um people don't like talking about it and that sort of step between the GP and the hospital, that, that next step makes it that little bit more difficult for people to talk about it. Whereas perhaps if whilst they're in their GP surgery, perhaps whilst they're talking about something else, if they could have this test there, it, it, it's going to make it far easier and ultimately far more people are going to get this detected. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. People are embarrassed about it. They don't really want to get to their GP in the first place. Therefore, we can reduce those barriers and get them to a test that will give them a definitive answer at that point of care. It's really significant. Uh, we know that almost 20% of all patients that go to their GP go because they've got a problem with bleeding from their bottom or they're bleeding from their bowel. And actually, they just want a diagnosis and they and they want an answer. So that, that really is a big part of it. Um, but it's also about trying to ensure that we don't lose patients into quite complex pathways of care. So patients we know at the moment are waiting too long to get into hospitals to have their tests. Uh, and they need uh, these definitive tests called a colonoscopy they're quite expensive you need a specialist they're to very, do them. they're it invasive as well aren't they they are invasive exactly right you quite often need to have a sedative to do them or a light anesthetic uh, and we're driving a camera all the way around the bowel so now what we know is that sometimes those are still needed those are the gold standard tests we want patients to have them but what we want to make sure is the right patients are having them for the right reason so the job of this technology that we've developed is that it selects out those patients that may not need that so that it means that those patients that do need a colonoscopy are much more likely to get to and get to that, that definitive test and so again what is this actual test? I mean, is it a, a blood sure. test is it what actually i'm at my gp the gp says Actually, while you're here, what it sounds like you've got is perhaps something that we need to test you for. What would I then have to go through? Okay, so it's a, it's basically a simple camera that we can deploy actually within the GP uh, surgery that doesn't need very expensive cleaning equipment and can be disposed of at the end of each case. And that camera is connected to a piece of software that allows the doctor or nurse performing that test in the GP practice to communicate in real time with a specialist so, like so me. So a disposable camera could be easily inserted into the patient there and then correct exactly right so it's it's gently put into the bottom you can see the bowel and you can see the rectum and and the really clever bit is the software that drives it so it allows that uh, that picture that image that video to be shared with the next but in a hospital so you can have a real-time discussion I mean, I about what you're seeing do you know the problem with it? Well, it's not the problem, because it sounds amazing, but when you say disposable camera, I mean, I really do consider, I really do think about one of those things you used to take on holiday. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's invasive. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you know it's what I mean? Not, yeah. But it's, it, it's it, not it, a big Polaroid. No, I was gonna so, say, you know. <laughs> yeah. So so this is a tiny camera. Actually the camera itself is is reusable. We obviously sustainability is a big problem. You know, we need to think about that. So they it's, can reuse but, the camera, but there is a means by right. which there is a part exactly of it that right. does. So the that passive can be, bit is exactly right, you're spot on. Yeah. Get it. All right. Um well this is good because how many people get affected by bowel cancer? Well, we probably get about 42,000 cases a year in the UK, um, and we probably have about 150,000 people maybe living with bowel cancer at the moment, and the, and, and the, you know, the fallout from bowel cancer, it's incredibly common. It's a silent killer. Many people who have bowel cancer don't know they have symptoms, and about a quarter of these patients will present as an emergency with advanced disease. Uh, and, you know, we're trying to change that through uh, encouraging patients to see their GP to get a check if they have any concerns at all. And what are those symptoms, just to remind uh, uh, people of those? Uh, brilliant question. So if you're having a persistent change in your bowel habits, so you're having looser bowel motions, you're moving to constipation, and that lasts for more than six weeks, you really do need to get checked. If you're having bleeding, particularly altered blood that's mixed in with your bowel motions, again, you really do need to get checked. If you're having a persistent tummy pain, it's just not going away and you're worried about it, come and see me, be delighted to look after you. And also, I think it's just really important to stress that um, the, the, your GP has seen it all, <laughs> has yeah. seen and heard it all. Yeah. So there really is no reason to not to bring it up because, you know, there is no yeah. reason to be embarrassed. The one place you shouldn't be embarrassed Correct. to talk about this stuff is in your GP surgery because, believe me, they have seen it, they've heard it, they've done it, they know it. Oh, please don't be embarrassed. In fact, quite the opposite. We're really hoping you'll come and see us. So, uh, you know, it, it just get checked. It's always men, by the way. Uh, we're the worst. Men are always uh, in my clinic because their wives have made them go. So, uh, you know, particularly that group, come and see me. Yeah, we're very macho, but when it comes to things like that, we get very, <laughs> yeah. very scared. And we shouldn't be. Really good to talk to you. Um, that's uh, really good news, Dr. James, uh, Mr. James Kinross, I should say, uh, consultant surgeon at colorectal surgery at Imperial College London.